only three Pokedex updates to report on. We're gonna have to scroll down a bit to find the first. Ah, here it is. While I was in the power plant, I managed to catch a Magnemite, raise it up to level 30, and evolve it into a Magneton. But that's not the only thing I caught. I also managed to catch an Electabuzz after much searching. Trust me, that took a while. That brings our total to 143 out of 150. We are so tantalizingly close to getting all 150 Pokemon. But with that being said, what's happening, guys? My name is Adam, aka Speedy Spectrum, and welcome back to Let's Play and Dub Pokemon Fire Red. In the last episode, we traveled to the power plant and caught the legendary Pokemon Zapdos. In this episode, we're going to visit Bill in the Pokemon Center. He had come to us with an offer to join him, and now is finally the time to take him up on his offer. Hey, you kept me waiting. Ready to set sail to one island? Before you say yes to this, you'll want to make sure that you are happy with your current team, because once you travel to one island, you won't be able to access Bill's PC for quite a while. So make sure that you're prepared. Well, that's it. Let's go! Looks like my pal's boat arrived too. He sent it specially here to Cinnabar to pick me up. Here we are! This is one island. There are several islands around here, and this is one of them. My friend Celio sent the boat to fetch me here. He's in charge of the island's PC network by his lonesome. Why am I telling you this now? Let's just go see Celio. Hey there, Celio! Bill! I can't believe you came out here. Well, absolutely. How's your research coming along? Oh, wait a sec. Red, this is my buddy, Celio. He's one dedicated PC maniac. Celio, this is Red. He's a rising contender as the Pokemon champ. That's really impressive. I hate to say it, but I have zero aptitude for battling. Anyway, I'm glad to meet you. So, bring me up to speed. How is your machine running? It's running fine, but we're too remote out here. The PCs on this island just can't link with your PC, Bill. Oh yeah? Okay, let me take a look-see. Hang on here. I think we can make it work. Let me help you, okay? Uh, Red, can I get you to wait for just a bit? Actually, can I get you to do me a favor? The island next to this one is called Two Island. There's a guy there that runs a game corner. He has this thing for rare rocks and gems. We keep in touch, being fellow maniacs. 
So, can I get you to deliver this meteorite to him? Red, if you are going to Two Island, please, take this. It's a pass for the service serving the local islands. It will let you travel between the islands 1, 2, and 3. Oh, you should have this, too. I'll catch you later! Say hi to the guy for me! Well, uh, we received quite a few items after that little exchange. But as Bill mentioned, or Celio mentioned, we can't access Bill's PC here on the Sevi Islands because it's not linked up. And that brings me to my next point. One island is part of an archipelago called the Sevi Islands, but more on that later. For now, I'm going to cut ahead until I defeat all of the trainers along the way. All right, phew, that took quite a while. There are some NPCs in these houses, but they really aren't worth talking to. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up a max repel in preparation for the sea voyage I have to make, and I just discovered that I'm out of max repels. <laughs> I guess a super repel will have to do for now. As we're riding on Schneider's back, um, I should uh, mention this place is the main side quest of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. This area was not in red, blue, and yellow, so it's nice that they added uh, this sort of archipelago, shall we say, for post-game content. And I admit that it could definitely be better. I should also mention that we can encounter some new Pokemon while we're here. The first of which is Ponyta. Number 77 in the Pokedex, Ponyta is a fire type, and it is the fastest fire Pokemon in the entire game. Really, really speedy. It's also got good physical attack, and I find that to be rather strange because fire Pokemon tend to be special attackers. And since all fire type moves are special, that means Ponyta really can't take advantage of stab damage. Its move pool doesn't help its stats. I would definitely recommend either Charmander or Growlithe, or even Vulpix for a good fire type. Whereas they thrive, Ponyta falters. And if you look hard enough, you can also find Ponyta's evolved form, which is Rapidash. Number 78 in the Pokedex, Rapidash is a fire type, obviously. Only a 5% encounter rate, so it's pretty rare. And I can't recommend Rapidash either. That should be obvious, given as how I couldn't recommend Ponyta. Neither of its abilities are too aren't, aren't very helpful. Uh, interesting fact is that Rapidash's beta name was Gallop. Yeah, once again, real creative with the beta names. Thank goodness they changed them in the English localization. The final Pokemon we can catch is Persian. Number 53 in the Pokedex, Persian is a normal type, and it is the evolved form of Meowth. Just like Rapidash, only a 5% encounter rate. Persian is very, very fast but its other stats are quite bad. Don't get me wrong, Limber is a good ability. There are just better normal types out there. Cough, Snorlax, Cough, Dodrio. Okay, you know what I mean. Persian's not that great. All right, with the Pokemon bios out of the way, I want to uh, delve a little deeper into my thoughts of the Sevi Islands. It's not a bad idea for a side quest. And if anything, it reminds me of the Orange Islands anime arc. And we get a Max Repel. Gee, what a coincidence. I might be using that pretty soon. 
But back to the Sevi Islands. They had the right idea, it just wasn't fully executed. If you ask me, I think the post-game in Black and White and Black and White 2 is much better. If it was more like that, then I would have appreciated the Sevi Islands a lot more. But as it stands, it's alright, just not one of my favorite post-games. Now there is a trainer here. I don't think uh, we have seen this uh, trainer class yet. This is a battle girl. Battle, or no, this is a crush girl, excuse me. Crush girls like to use fighting Pokemon such as Mankey. And wow, Howland is almost at level 47. I wasn't paying attention to how much I trained him. In fact, after this, Howland's going to be my highest level Pokemon. So that's pretty cool. And now she's going to send in Mankey's evolved form, which is Primeape. This might sound strange, but I'm actually going to send in Overton, because I want to show off something about Overton that has changed. There is a moveset change. I flew back to Pewter City, and I taught Overton Seismic Toss. Seismic Toss is a move that inflicts damage equal to the opponent's level. Overton cannot normally learn Seismic Toss, and there is no TM for it in the game. There was in Red, Blue, and Yellow. In order to have your Pokémon learn Seismic Toss, you have to go to Pewter City and enter the same lab where you got the Old Amber. There is a move tutor there that will teach one of your Pokémon Seismic Toss. And I thought it would be a good third attack for Overton. I haven't really been using Rest all that much. It might turn out to be a mistake, but I think it'll be worth it. Now this cave is going to take us to the Ember Spa. And good thing the Repel wore off when it did, because there are no wild Pokémon to be found in here. Now if you enter the Hot Springs, it acts as an automatic Pokémon Center. Very, very handy. We also want to talk to this dude. He's the creator of the Ember Spa, and thank goodness he did create it. And he's going to hand us a new HM! HM6, which contains Rock Smash. Rock Smash is a fighting type move that's pretty weak overall, but like all HMs, it has a secondary effect. It can break certain rocks in the environment, and sometimes said rocks will have Pokemon. You can also find items in there. Um, it started out as a TM in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, but was later changed to an HM. So we're going to keep on surfing upwards until we get to this staircase, which takes us to Mount Ember. The first thing we need to do here is talk to this guy. This dude is a move tutor, and he will offer to teach one of our Pokemon Explosion. We're going to take him up on his offer. Explosion is the most powerful attack in the game, and I am going to teach it to Rasmussen, given that it's my only option. <laughs> but obviously, we're going to uh, get rid of self-destruct. As I said earlier, Explosion is the most powerful move in the game, bar none. It's really, really strong, with a base power of 300. But it has the exact same drawback as self-destruct. The user faints upon usage. We have two rocket grunts here, but we're not going to pay attention to them. Instead, we're going to head over to these boulders, which can be moved. Like any mountain, there is a top, and there is going to be something rather special waiting for us. But first, we have a trainer battle. Hello there, I believe you are a new and a new type of trainer class. And indeed you are, this is our first Pokemon Ranger. Pokemon Rangers are rather interesting. They were introduced in Generation 4. 
Uh, no, they're introducing Generation 3. What am I talking about? <laughs> Great. I'm not thinking clearly. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Pokemon Rangers typically specialize in grass Pokemon, and they also tend to use a lot of healing items. But from Generation 4 onwards, aka Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, they started using strong, evolved Pokemon, much like Cool Trainers, or Ace Trainers as they were later known. And since they use Grass Pokemon, they're a pretty easy target for Howland. I'm kind of surprised that Howland is my strongest Pokemon right now, because for the longest time, he was in fact the lowest leveled. Uh, I'm gonna switch things up a bit. I'm gonna send out Schneider. Because I want to see how much damage an Ice Beam can do to this Gloom. I am eight levels above it. So, I should be okay in theory, but we'll see. Oh wow, it was a one-hit KO. Well, I can't really complain about that. Yes, you are right. I am shockingly good. There aren't that many Pokemon Rangers in the game. They're definitely one of the rarer trainer classes. Okay. So these rocks here can be broken using Rock Smash. Unfortunately, I don't really want to teach uh, Rock Smash to any of my Pokemon. I believe you are a trainer, so let's go ahead and battle you. All right, nothing too spectacular. And I also want to battle you, because I believe you are a male Pokemon Ranger, if memory serves. Yes, you are. I know that Pokemon Rangers played a much more significant role in some of the Pokemon spin-offs, and I can't remember exactly what that spin-off was called, but they used something called a Capture Snare, which allowed you to momentarily borrow a Pokemon's power, even though you hadn't officially caught it. It's a really interesting idea, and admittedly, I've never played any of the games. I probably should one of these days. But I remember always being fascinated by the concept. And they also played a major role in some spin-offs of the anime. Alright, down goes his Exeggutor. Not a difficult task at all. That was indeed hot, Pokemon Ranger Logan, courtesy of Howland. Alright, we are done here. There are a few Pokemon that we can encounter while we're here on Mount Ember. And I will talk about them as I, well, as I set up another repel, obviously. The first Pokemon we can encounter is Graveler, the evolved form of Geodude. Graveler is a rock and ground type, and you can occasionally find it in rocks that can be broken with Rock Smash. I've used Graveler before. You should know how good it is. Incredibly resilient, but really weak to water and grass. Solid physical attack and defense. I don't need to say anything more, do I? The next Pokemon is Machoke. Number 67 in the Pokedex, Machoke is a fighting type and the evolved form of Machop. It's an excellent physical attacker, and Guts is a great ability to have. The downside is that it is slow, and you also need to trade it in order for it to reach its final stage of evolution. That is a downside, but if you can manage to get to the final evolution stage of... Bleh, if you can make it reach its final evolved form of Machamp, it's a good Pokemon. Alright, Leaf Green users, pay attention. This is the only place where you can catch Magmar. Magmar is number 126 in the Pokedex. It is a fire type, and as I said, it is exclusive to Leaf Green only. Fire Red players, you'll have to trade for it. First of all, it's got a pretty good ability. Flame Body has a 30% chance of, par of burning the opponent if the Pokemon is hit with a physical, if, if it's hit with a physical attack. Not only that, but Magmar also has a decent move pool, and it's got respectable stats with the exception of its physical defense. One interesting note about Magmar is in the red, in the classic games, 
only in blue version, mind you, it could only be encountered in the bottom floor of the Pokemon Mansion, so they decided to switch it up here. That's rather unique. Overall, I like Magmar's design a lot. And if you don't have a good fire type, which you really should at this point, then I can definitely recommend Magmar. Alright, we are done here. I should also mention that I decided to stock up on Ultra Balls. I went to the Pokemart, and I now have 51 Ultra Balls. The reason? Well, we're about to find out. We have some boulders to push. That is true, but trust me when I say, the payoff is going to be magnificent. Take a look at that! Does this look familiar? Because we've caught two birds already, and here is the trifecta. Once again, be sure you save your game. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Alright, I've taken a long enough pause. Let's see if we can score the hat trick. Presenting Moltres, the legendary bird of fire. Moltres is number 146 in the Pokedex, and much like Zapdos, it is an excellent special attacker. Zapdos is my personal favorite of the birds, and Articuno is my least favorite, which means Moltres falls in the middle. It's a great Pokemon. It's got amazing stats as expected of a legendary Pokemon. And when Moltres uses Flamethrower, it smarts. It can almost burn anything in its path. It's a great mixed attacker and decently fast as well. The only downside to Moltres is I'm not a fan of its typing. Fire Flying gives it a quad weakness to rock, just like Articuno. And this became especially problematic for Moltres in Generation 4 when rock types got a massive buff. But overall, Moltres is fabulous. It wasn't that great in red, blue, and yellow, but it's um, it only got better as time went on. Although Moltres has a good move pool, let's face it, all you really need is Flamethrower and you're set. Moltres is at level 50, just like the other two birds. It is armed with the moves Agility, Fire Spin, Flamethrower, and Endure. Flamethrower is obviously the main danger in this fight, because Moltres can easily burn almost any Pokemon you send out. Even Pokemon that resist Moltres aren't safe. And look how low its HP is! Yeah, I'm not gonna get it any lower than that. Fire Spin is also rather irritating to deal with. It doesn't deal much damage, but it does trap you. And since Amber is trapped, I can't switch her out. Oh, wow! How cool would that have been if I had caught it in one try? Yes, as you might have guessed, this is the reason why I decided to stock up on Ultra Balls. I've been buying a lot of Ultra Balls, but really, can you blame me? Let's hope that 51 is going to be enough, because I, I used 30 to capture Articuno and 20 to capture Zapdos. Let's hope Moltres will be a little bit more cooperative. But odds are it won't be. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that did not just happen! <laughs> well, alright then! 
Moltres, the flame Pokemon, one of the legendary bird Pokemon. Those seeing it are overwhelmed by its orange wings that seem to be on fire. How many Ultra Balls did that take? I'm really curious because I was not paying attention. <laughs> oh, wow. It took three Ultra Balls. I don't believe it. All that preparation. And it only took three. I am literally gobsmacked. But I'm going to need some time to cool down. So next time on Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red, we're going to explore the other two islands. See you guys next time. <laughs>